we both um, had des- de- decided that we were going to stop drinking. And, and, he, and, you know, so it was a, a situation where, you know, we both went cold turkey. Well, you know, I don't think either of us felt great because you stop drinking coffee for a day and you get a headache. You know, so I just, I think that, you know, I think that we were both dealing with it. But also, because we're so close to the, the cruise lines here, uh, that Norvirus shit is, is always pro- prevalent. So, I'm sorry, I've got like, you know, acid coming up my fucking throat. So, um, Kev, what precipitated the decision, before we get into the events of the last few days, what precipitated your decision and T's decision uh, not to drink anymore? Was it something you talked about prior? Yeah. No, I mean, it was just, um, you know, he, he had had a couple of, uh, of, of incidents. And um, we actually sat, we, we sat up here uh, last Wednesday. And in the course of the show, he, he drank. Um, four or five beers, unbeknownst to me, and they had been in this re- this this refrigerator. You know, they've been in there for maybe you know three or four hurricanes ago. And they just you know they, there's like nothing in the refrigerator except you know some bottles of water that we bring up here, and there was a six pack of Asahi uh, Japanese beer, and he drank them, and I and I got you know I got pissed at him. I said that's just not. I said you know we. You, because he he'd had this situation, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year where he was in, it was in the, it was hospitalized for you know, almost sixty days, and um, you know, it's this is this is uh, this is my cross to bear, you know, it's it's, it's alcoholism. It um, took one of my dearest friends, um, a, a, a gentleman named Ben Cianci, uh May, uh, May a year ago, it um, took Scott, and um, and now it's taken my son. Did you have alcoholism in your family, Kevin? <laughs> when your dad dies at thirty six, who fucking knows? <laughs> yeah, you know, he drank. You know, he drank. I don't know. I I don't know. Uh, it wasn't referenced as a problem, though, by your mother subsequently or anything. No, it was, it was hard to get drunk when you smoked a carton of cigarettes a day. No yeah. time for a bottle to hit the lips. There's always a yeah, he's too busy, you know, monkey fucking a cigarette off the next one. You know? yeah. So they they do say there's something in her. My father was an alcoholic. I, I though I'm not. But I do have uh, addictive traits to my personality. I definitely can can say that. So that's why I was wondering if maybe it was something you'd you'd had in your family at all. No, oh, my my wife has it in her on her side of the family. Yeah. So um, I don't really think anybody in my family, if if anybody was the the like, I didn't I didn't drink. I mean, I drank when I played I, when I, play, I played ball in college. Like when I was in college, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like, I, I, you know, I, I drank. I probably started drinking when I was thirteen. I don't know, something like that. But I don't know, I'm smoking little pinners and shit back then, and you know, so right. So, <clears throat> so you guys make the decision on, on Wednesday uh, after the show. After the show, so. So, so you know, a week later he passes. So I, obviously, you know, I mean, it was. But the, the other thing was, and it, it's it's really, you know, when you look back at things, it's like, so he wasn't feeling good. So we were kind of, my wife and I were just kind of like waiting on him hand and foot, and um, and, I, and we knew, you know, he was trying to, you know, he was trying to do this. And one of the things that, if you WebMD that, one of the things of, of uh, cold turkey is uh, that you have an a, a increased rate of, of having or increased risk of, of having a seizure. So, to other parents, 
Um, well, let me ask, let me frame the question this way. You guys made a decision to quit drinking on Wednesday. Had alcohol been a discussion, a fairly regular discussion, and for how long? T was 26. Now T let's is, go backwards. I I think that T is at a, uh, alcohol has been, uh, and Max and I, Max, Max grew up with him. T and Max, were, how old were you guys, six? Five, you guys, so yeah. So the the boys the boys were five when like I I met I met Max's dad um, first and then we all went on a Disney uh, a Disney cruise and sorry to hear that oh was, fuck the kids okay. loved him man okay. and it was uh, St Thomas uh, Cayman. And I think maybe St. Martin or something like that. And then, like, once we did that, we came back. Got a burp like a fucking... Sorry. Like pop, one of your, pop one of your Nexium there. Is that what you take, by the way, for the GERD? Because I have terrible acid reflux, too. So I'm no, on, I've been on Nexium for 20 it, years, it, it, which they tell me like, is giving me cancer. It's pan... pan it's some... Surf oh, pana, pana plug, whatever. Yeah, pana, pana, yeah it's like 40 milli... It's like... It's what they give you when you are actually bleeding out in a bag. I just, I just have it in pill form. You just what, asked for the heavy duty gimmick. You know, one, one of the many things keeping my uh, my uh, metabolic syndrome genetics at, at bay. <laughs> well, you told me there were no sixty year old Nashes or no fifteen year old Great Danes. So what you there is now? You're, you're laughing. Yeah, there, exactly. There is you're now. laughing at the there universe. is now. no. No, but I, at the same time, we would we, we we took a picture last year. We were all up in Michigan, and all the Nash, like my sons, my, my brother and his son and, and me and my son stood there, and we all did this, and we took the picture, all four of us. And I told, you know, it's just like, and I, I, was, I actually looked at it last night. I looked at the picture, and it was just like, like fuck, man. Because now, you know, T is at, at twenty six. He beats my dad by ten years. So then, so that when I do, when I start doing those kind of math problems, and I realize that when when my, my when my son was born on June twelfth, nineteen ninety six, and I had to go to Japan shortly after that for something NWO related, and um. Or maybe it's not. I, I just remember that I was looking at him and realizing that I was going to be July 9th, I was going to turn 36. So I was going to be my dad's age when he was basically born. He was born, wow. Yeah. So, that, and, I, and I just really, that like just resonated like, wow, man, my dad died so early because I was a kid. You know, I was still a kid, man. And it's like, now he passes ten years before that, and I just like it's it's it's. That's what I said, man. I I, I must have been a rotten motherfucker to have as much bad shit happen to me as as I do. I might have money, and I, but I tell you what, man. I this is. He's happy you're here. He's yeah. happy. I think he would have wanted you to come out. Talk about him and uh, and yourself. And uh, I don't give a fuck about me. I do him. Well, through ah! through you, through you, we have stuff to learn. We yeah. may be dealt and, a similar and, and, hand. And my whole thing is, you know, you were talking earlier about the about the alcohol. Mm -hmm. And number one, you know, this our our society makes alcohol very sexy. You know, James Bond, you know, shaken, not stirred. Women drink, you know, champagne. Everything is so sexy. Drink champagne and all you, all you do is, is have the world's, you know, worst headache the next day. You know, it, it's, it's a nasty, number one, it's, 
this is this is the country we live in. Fentanyl is in, in in a category completely by itself, opposite cannabis, which is with heroin and cocaine. How in in twenty twenty two? How is cannabis still classified what it is? I don't know. And when people oppose its legalization, these are the same people that have no issue with you going down to the corner, hammering a fifth of Jack and, and you know, and, and killing getting, and killing their two soccer soccer age kids in the backseat of some shitty Dodge caravan. I have no problem. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, Al- was- alcohol is the is the nastiest. Uh, it's such a nasty drug. I mean, it's just, uh, and it's a drug. So anybody out there, if if if, if you haven't drank, you, you've probably done yourself a, a, an incredible uh, service. And if if you do drink and you're and you're having problems, and you know it's affecting your life and you know it's affecting your health. You can't see the damage it's doing, especially your, you know, like nobody goes to the doctor. Nobody gets checked up. Nobody does anything. Nobody gets blood work. And that silent killer alcohol is eating your organs, weakening your heart, weakening your, your constitution. And, I have spent half my life glamorizing the rock and roll, hard charging, hard drinking, part drug partying, wrestling world that I grew up in and lived in, and I I really need to like I need to take a step back from that and go, you're 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 part of the problem, Nash. You glamorize a lifestyle that kills people. And you got to stop doing that. So, you guys, like, Sean, you got to you got to keep me in check on this show. Yeah. Now. Well, lessons lessons for all, and um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're certainly not the only one. I've talked to hundreds of them over the years. That also, everyone everyone has a little fun with those. Well, I, I, with I think those it's, stories. It, it, it's hard. It's it's not like it's an exaggeration. That's the that's the 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 real problem of it. You know, it's not like a, the, the the lifestyle is was exaggerated. It was, it's like it's actually probably toned down a little bit because, you know, for the, for the, the innocence of our families, right? But uh, yeah, no, what you say is true, and and uh, there was uh, there was a time. It's people also have to understand that things were a little different. Times were a little different, and uh, alcohol, though though no no less dangerous if behind the wheel or if consumed in copious amounts daily. Um, you didn't, you didn't have at one time, you know, in we're talking seventies early, you didn't have the painkiller availability that, that came in the nineties and the thousands and, and all that stuff. So it got, it got, it, it got compounded very quickly. And he, and uh, this is no newsflash to anybody who's seen the amount of wrestler overdoses and whatnot in, uh, in recent years, far, far outweighing uh, any of the guys that worked in the 70s or, or prior. So, yeah, but but you're right. And and um, it in the shoot world, it, it kind of became like a punchline, right? The the 33 Soma story, for example, yeah. or, or something like that. It becomes an anecdote. But uh, because everybody was okay. Right, uh, because everybody yeah, lived mean, to tell I mean, about no, it. No, no, yeah, no, every no that no, those that lived told about it. Right, not not everybody lived to tell about it because that was that was not the case. Right, it's it's a miracle, as I'm actually not looking at you and now looking at myself. In this, I'm looking right in my own eyes right now. And where am I? There I am, and it's. I'm amazed that I'm sitting here alive because I, sh- there's, and sh- we've all said this, we shouldn't be. 
your guys, your boys. You, Am I you, slowly turning into Jeff Bridges? You're going to have to work on an impression for that, and we'll we'll get well, you know, Better he, Jeff he, than Bo. Better Jeff than Bo, I think. He started, you know, it, 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 lately uh, he, he, he kind of has this thing going here. You know, COVID almost took me. You know, it's Isn't it amazing how Michael Douglas has turned into Kirk Douglas. Yeah, have you seen him recently? Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. 